I made this sculpture in the video last week and it's made of foam and it got a lot of comments and most of the comments were about can you skin this foam? How do you skin it? What do you use it with? How do you coat it? And can you pull molds from this foam? So let's do some experiments and find out. Before we get going, I got to say something about the last video. It had a massive senior moment in it. <laughs> you don't carve foam on your bench top like I did in that video. It just makes a giant mess. When you carve foam, carve it over a trash bag. You'll save yourself so much cleanup time. It's so much smarter. I don't know why I forgot that. I was thinking YouTube, not, you know, lazy, practical me in my studio, carve over a trash bag. Let's test a variety of materials that you can use to coat the foam before you make the mold. I took this block of foam and divided it into nine panels. Plus I have an extra bonus piece so we can test a total of 10 materials. Let's start with beeswax. I love it for its compatibility with rubber and resin. It's non-toxic, it's easy to work with, it's readily available. It's my gold standard and I know automatically that it's going to work perfectly. Next up is spray primer. This is Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover Paint and Primer, but Krylon makes a spray primer. Ace has their own brand of spray primers. Uh, I've tried a bunch of different kinds and they all seem to work really well. There is a material called High Build Primer, which lays down heavier, thicker coats, and that might work even better in this application. And I fiddled with this application a bit and ultimately put on two coats, whereas in the other samples, I only used one coat. The cyanoacrylates, the super glues, represented here by my tired old, almost used up bottle of Starbond, uh, makes a really nice sealer. Very fast because you just, you know, put it on there and just hit it with kicker and it just cures instantly. So it's quick and it's fast, a small bottle, but a little goes a long way and it makes a pretty effective sealer for porous materials. Next is shellac. It's a natural ingredient. It's made by the sticklac beetle and it's used as a food ingredient. You can actually eat it and it's an all-round excellent sealer for porous materials, and I use it all the time. The epoxy family of resins is represented by 5-Minute Epoxy, one of my favorite substances on the earth, and it also makes a reasonably effective skin over foam, but of course, in this little bottle, it's awfully expensive, but you can get epoxies that you can brush on in much larger containers, much larger and much more cost-effective quantities. Next, we have urethane resins. This is Silpax Quick Cast, and I love it. It's a basic casting resin, but it sets up really fast, which means I can cycle the molds rapidly and make a lot of parts fast. Because it sets up so rapidly, it makes it easy to work with when you're skinning foam. Silpak resins are now sold by Polytech Corporation, so you can find them either at silpak.com or polytech.com. Also in the same category of materials, urethanes, is Silpak's Trowlon. The difference is that this is a material that's not really a sealer, it's actually a skin. And you can build up multiple coats into any thickness of skin you want. Good old tight bonds, just basic aliphatic resin glue, actually makes a pretty good sealer for a variety of porous surfaces. So I'm confident that it will work well as a sealer for foam, plus it has the advantage of being widely available at your basic big box hardware stores. This is Bullseye by Zinzer, and it is an all-purpose primer. Uh, I use it mostly for construction jobs and painting and stuff like that, but it also makes a good primer for urethanes and uh, projects like these. It's a lot denser and a lot thicker than the spray primer, but it should work well in this application. Acrylic gesso. This also represents all acrylics because acrylics is not just gesso and paint. You can also get things like gel mediums and uh, you know really thick paste-like materials that you can build up surfaces with and really thick coats with very effectively. So acrylic all around useful material. I rigged up this mold case out of blue painter's tape and mixed up a batch of tin silicone rubber. So now we can coat these nine sealed samples, then fill up this shallow mold box made out of unsealed foam, and then finally coat the sample sealed with plain old acrylic gesso. All right. The rubber's cured. Let's see what we got. Let's start with the gessoed surface. Oh, peels right off. Absolutely clean, no problems. Let's get in close and take a look at this. 
As you can see, it captured all the details, but there's no foam sticking to the mold itself. It came out nice and clean. That means when you cast resin against that silicone rubber, it's going to perfectly duplicate the surface texture of the foam. Oh, yeah. All right. Peeled off. Stuck a little bit right there. Well, the bottom line is that each and every one of the coatings worked. This one failed the most. Right in there. It did stick. It bonded in there. Right in there. See that? Uh, but otherwise, all the coatings perform perfectly. So which sealer you choose really depends on what kind of surface you want on your sculpture. You can see that they did yield up different surface textures and qualities. So you can actually use the sealer to have pretty good control over the kind of surface you want on your foam. Still, these surfaces are fragile. They're not hard. You can mash them with a, all of them. You can just mash them. This is that urethane shell material. This is urethane, just plain urethane casting resin. That's pretty hard. This is just primer. Now you can dent it. This obviously is dentable, dentable. None of these sealers provide any kind of surface protection and the piece is still obviously very fragile. So if you want a hard surface, a shell, you need to use a material that's designed to shell foam. Well now that we know that the sealers work, the question is do we even need sealers? So remember, this is unsealed. This is just raw foam and rubber. Let's see what we get. I'm just going to pull it off. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, I pretty much expected that to happen. Obviously, it pulled up a lot of foam with it. Uh, but you could still clean this <laughs> if you wanted to. Uh, and uh, you'd have quite the rough, foamy textured surface on your castings. Uh, this, this rubber would not last very long as a mold because the, the resin would just eat that mold really quickly. I've done quite a bit of sculpture using foam over the years both for commercial jobs and for my own work. <laughs> so I made this dude out of the exact same material that this guy's made out of, but it's also got a hard shell on it. It's durable. And that's because I skinned it with a shell of Trowlon. Now, I like the rough surface texture and did it deliberately, but you can apply this material so that it's smooth and precise. You can pretty much do anything you want with it. I made these pieces using a combination of foam with plywood pieces stuck in. I just cut recesses, roughly cut recesses into the foam and slotted the plywood deep inside, just stuck it in there. And I filled up the gaps with magic sculpt just to make a nice clean edge between the foam and the wood. I mean, it's super light. You can make Christmas ornaments out of this. You can make all kinds of hanging stuff. It's just very light. In this case, the foam is just sealed up with gesso and acrylic. Uh, I left it you know, pretty crude and pretty funky because that was the look I was going for. But uh, they're really light, they're really fun, simple materials, simple method, really fast, and a lot of fun to do. Most of the weight is in the plywood. This is just basic quarter-inch Luan plywood, cheap stuff. It might even be masonite, I don't remember. But uh, very quick to work with, easy to carve, brush on acrylic, and you're done. I made these pieces as comps, so they're just sculpted rough in foam and covered with gesso and acrylic. So they're pretty fragile, but they're also super light. And uh, I think you could use this to make Christmas ornaments or any other hanging object. Uh, yeah, it'd be a little fragile. Surface is a little bit delicate, but they're super light and they're super fast to make and a lot of fun. So I made all these three all the same way. Just carved foam, just like you saw me do in the last video and gesso and acrylic paint on top, nothing fancier than that. Works like a champ. I got a comment in the last video about how me carving skulls was indicative of the decline of American society and an obsession with death and all this heavy, dark stuff. And I went, wow, way like I catch a sight of these devils. <laughs> all right, good fun.